let's continue with third lecture on class 10 geography chapter 7 lifelines of national economy in this lecture we shall take up two topics that are communication and international trade and try to wind up the chapter so let's begin communication since ancient times humans have used different means of communication latest advances in technology have made long distance communication easier than earlier. Now, there is no need for physical movement of the commutator or the receiver. Now, there are two types of communication. Personal communication and mass communication. As the name suggests, personal communication is done between two people or a group of few people. It is done through telephone, fax, email, etc. While mass communication includes television, radio, press, films, newspaper and magazines. Mass communication provides entertainment as well as creates awareness about the various national programs and policies of the government. Now, let's discuss the means of communication in our country, India. First, the Indian Postal Network. This is the largest in the world. It handles parcels as well as personal written communication. So it handles two types of mails, the first class mail and the second class mail. First class mail includes postcards and envelopes. They are airlifted between stations covering both land and air. So for the, uh, distributing the first class mail, we use the land as well as the air transport. While for distributing second class mail, they are delivered using land and water transport. So in this way, first class mail is more superior than the second class mail. And second class mail includes book packets and newspapers. So first class mail is obviously more important, so it is delivered faster using air transport, while for the second class mail, the uh, Indian Postal Network uses water and land transport. To facilitate quick delivery of mails, Six mail channels have been introduced. So nowadays, if we go to a post office, then you will find different colors of post boxes. This represents the different mail channels introduced by the Indian Postal Network. Second, Telecom Network. All urban places and two-thirds of villages have been covered with STD facilities. STD stands for Subscriber Tongue Dialing. Today, we can make a STD call at uniform rate from any place. It has been made possible by integrating space technology with communication technology. And the third mode is radio. The All India Radio Akashwani broadcasts a large variety of programs in national, regional and local languages for variety of age groups. Fourth, television. Doordarshan, the national TV channel of India, is one of the largest terrestrial network in the world. It broadcasts variety of programs from entertainment to education to sports for people of different age groups. Fifth, newspapers. So India publishes a large number of newspapers and periodicals annually. Newspapers are published in 100 languages and dialects. The largest number of newspapers are published in Hindi language, followed by English language and followed by Urdu language on third position. And the last means of communication is cinema. India is the largest producer of feature films in the world. It also produces short films and other kinds of films. The Central Board of Film Certification is the authority to certify both Indian and foreign films. So you must see a, a certificate comes in the beginning of every movie. This is a certificate given by a central board of film certification. Now let's discuss the last topic of this chapter which is international trade. The exchange of goods among people, states and countries is called trade. International trade is the trade between different countries. Advancement of international trade of a country is an index of its economic prosperity. So the more the international trade, the more the economic prosperity. It can be carried out by using sea routes, air routes and land routes. It is important 
because a single nation doesn't have all the resources. So it needs to borrow several resources from other nations and needs to give their resources to the other nations. Now, international trade has two components, export and import. The goods which are sold to other countries come under export. Items exported from India are gems, jewellery, chemicals, agricultural and allied products. India has emerged as a software giant and is earning a large foreign exchange through export of information technology. So a lot of softwares are developed in India and then exported to the developed countries. One example is that call centers are made in India and from there calls are made to all the countries of the world. This is an example of an export of information technology from India. Now let's discuss about the second component which is import. So the goods are purchased from other countries in this import. Items imported to India are crude oil, base metals, gemstones, chemicals, electronic items, etc. So basically export means sending out your goods to other countries while import means bringing in the goods from other countries. So export is sending out Import is bringing in. Now let's discuss about the balance of trade. So if the amount of export is greater than the amount of import, then this is known as a favorable balance of trade. But if the amount of ex import exceeds the amount of export, then this is known as unfavorable balance of trade. So import greater than export, unfavorable. Export greater than import, favorable. Now, another sector which has grown as a trade in recent years is the tourism sector. Tourism in India has grown substantially over the last three decades. Advantages of tourism as a trade More than 15 million people are engaged in the tourism industry in India. It supports, it promotes national integrity and supports the local handicrafts. So, people come from other countries to buy the local handicrafts from India and in this way the local handicraft producers are benefited. It also helps in spreading the Indian culture and heritage. So these foreigners who come to India see the Indian culture and take some handicrafts from India to other countries then they spread the Indian culture and heritage to those countries. Now there are many types of tourism for which India is visited. These are heritage tourism, ecotourism, adventure tourism, cultural tourism, medical tourism and business tourism. With this, we come to the end of this chapter. If you have any doubt, then ask in the comment box. And if you find these videos useful, then do subscribe to the channel.